Welcome to the Invivo Project podcast, where we talk about real world, real life experiences that empower men to embrace vulnerability so they can live life to the fullest. My name's Eric Payton. I'm your host. And today I'm joined by Dr. Amy Anderson. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is because I've really done a lot of therapy, in my opinion, uh, which really started about six years ago. Like prior to getting the job out at uh, the treatment center, I'd never really done any therapy before. Uh, and then being surrounded by it for four years, I finally was like, okay, like I need to do some therapy. That's um, cool. And, you know, I've done therapy, I've done EMDR, I've done these intensives. Um, but when something like my death of my brother, when he, died two years ago um that really brought up all this trauma again that I thought that I had dealt with but I think that goes to your point that in the past I had looked at going into therapy that I was going to fix myself and now what I've realized it's not about fixing myself it's about embracing the things the traumas, the brokenness and acknowledging them and then like blessing those things instead of looking at it as I've got to fix myself. Love that. So, um, you know, and I guess that goes into what you were just talking about. Like it's a continual daily practice to keep everything in check. And I guess I, I mean, I know that, but knowing it for somebody else and then knowing it for, for myself has been a different experience. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. We always have this fear that ours is going to be different and it's not going to change. Yeah. Like we know it, it can. Yeah. And what you're describing, you're right. Embracing those parts of your story. Mm -hmm. Also checking in with the messages that you've been telling yourself about you for so long. And as we said earlier, that was the one area that was, the um, least defined for you when we did the blueprinting. So until you can recognize those messages and start looking at, do I believe the message? I find some patients, when I ask them, do you actually believe this? They'll say, no, I really don't. But subconsciously, they're working off of it Mm -hmm. and going into survival. Or you might believe it, and we work on what's a new message that you you can start to believe. That will help that when you do have other experiences in your life that trigger an old trauma, it, it can start to become softer. I see. And won't feel so huge and traumatic. Mm-hmm. Did that make, does that make sense? Yeah, I know it makes sense. I was just thinking uh, for me personally, and I know we talked about this right before we started recording, but mm-hmm. for me, uh, especially the exercise you did Uh, with me where you said, hey, reach out to some close friends and have them give you um, some adjectives to describe to to describe you. And so it was so like, it's really cool um, to reach out to a couple of people that I really trusted and say, hey, will you do this for me? And then I got those, I got those messages back. And for me, Mm. um, I really intellectually like in my brain I do believe that stuff Mm -hmm. but like what we were talking about um believing it like up here but then getting it from here to my heart um as something that I've been it's been a struggle for me right so that's a common struggle in therapy actually yeah I always describe to my patients um you have your intellectual thinking back here and your emotion here and part of the therapy process is for those things to come together and collide. Do you think how many years have you been doing everything the same way? Long, longer oh, than I've longer long than time. I've been doing therapy. Exactly. Sure. So those yeah. new messages, are, have you said them as many times as you said the others? I don't know. There's some research that suggests your negative self-talk mm-hmm. plays 10,000 times a day, which I don't know how they come up with that number, but I would think it is about that or higher, right? Mm-hmm. We don't even know our brain's talking to us like that. So now we come in and we're going to change those messages. So we have to be very intentional to make sure we're saying them even out loud every day because out loud helps replant a new memory. Yeah. Um, So don't give up. Keep going. Yeah. And so, I mean, for anybody listening, like, I guess 
your advice would be identify those messages and then what would be the, ne- I mean, you hear about affirmations mm-hmm. and it's hard for me to like look in the mirror and do that stuff. Cause it just seems so silly. I don't know yeah. if like, I mean, I hear that all the time. Yeah. No, right. I think that can be, it can be very different. Um, so giving an affirmation sometimes can be risky because you can actually be placating and shutting something down. You need to lean into so if you're in problem solving zone, feeling an emotion out of four, five, six, right? Yeah. You can lean into that and check your thinking. Do I believe this thought? No, I know I'm not being abandoned. I'm feeling abandoned. Stay in the four, five, six, now change the message. I see. So you're doing it at the same time, and that's being truthful to yourself. But you're changing the message to a truth, not necessarily an affirmation every time. I see. That's the difference. Yeah. So you're really doing it. Your ultimate goal is to be able to work it in real time, not necessarily get up and be in the mirror and say all these things over and over until you believe them. Right. I mean, every morning wake up and say I'm worthy. That's a great thing to do. Yes. But not in the moment you're feeling anxious and traumatized because that's when we want that we tend to go to the negative self-talk. So that's when you want to change the message, not the affirmation. I see. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I think, um, again, the power of writing everything down, um, and actually just seeing it on, on the whiteboard of what we've been doing has been powerful, um, enabled, enabled me to really feel the difference. Um, and again, just seeing it on paper is, is, is a big thing. I think so, too, especially with your adjectives. Yeah. Because look how many there are. There's lots of them. And you can visually see that every day, all day. And at some point, your brain just remembers it. Yeah. I I love that. And I think the other thing we haven't talked about um, also is your fear and need. Yeah. 100% of the time, we go into survival because of a fear or a need not getting met. And oftentimes, those are reflective of the messages we've adopted. Mm -hmm. So that's that's. A good thing to know too if you walk away with nothing but checking in with what is it i'm afraid of right now yeah and then writing it out journaling writing it down um it, that can be powerful itself yeah um yeah so that's basically you're talking about the situation that comes up then you have your thought then it's like the feeling and then what am I going to do exactly. with, with the feeling? And that do can come from either place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess, you know, I mean, we've, we've, we've talked a lot about um, the questions that we kind of came up with prior to this, mm-hmm. but so where we're at right now, where do we go? Like what's the next step? You know, and I'm really just not necessarily for, well, I guess for people listening, but for myself, curiosity too. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, I feel like we've identified these survival uh, yes. things that I do. We've identified the core. We've looked at some messages, messaging mm-hmm. that I believe. We've changed some of that. So what? where do we go from here? So there's two parts to where we're going to move forward next. Um, we're going to look at core beliefs. The ones you were raised with, the ones you've believed your whole life, and we're going to assess them and look at which ones you still believe and want to keep and which ones you don't. And the ones you want to keep, we're going to start building you because now you have more adjectives in your core. We need to strengthen that. You have to work off that more because it's not as developed as your survival. Mm-hmm. And then changing those those new core beliefs, you're going to start living those out. And that's hard for people because they're new. They often will go back to, it's outweighted. Yeah. By the old core beliefs. So oftentimes we'll go back to things we don't really believe because it's habit. We were raised this way. It's what's expected. Mm -hmm. So consistently staying congruent to what you believe, eventually that strengthens with your core. And now you're you're you and you're living in your space. Mm -hmm. With that, we also want to look at um, the trauma and keep talking about it. You want to release it because your body's holding it. Yeah. Your hippocampus has it stored, and so you want to be able to have more power. The more we avoid it, the more power it has over us. And and like you said, writing it out, journaling constantly, letting yourself get to some anger that maybe is hidden that you haven't felt, and working through that. 
at the same time we're practicing what we just did over the last four weeks. Yeah. No, is that the, and then we talk about, tra- everybody talks mm-hmm. a lot about trauma and getting rid of trauma. Um, and, you know, again, going back to the intensives, the EMDR, mm-hmm. but am I hearing you right? And I think for people listening, um, talking about the trauma is what releases it. Well, I think there are two parts to it. Any, any way of externalizing it, whether it's talking about it, writing it out, acting it out, you're releasing. So you're going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. Um, the other part of it I think that's missing oftentimes is we're not fluently in a healthy language as we go through our trauma. So the part that maybe you haven't completely done or a lot of patients haven't done is really work off that core space. And I would think you haven't just because we just identified it. Right. And especially looking at your negative self-talk, those memories and changing them, doing all of it as a whole, I think can be life-changing. So you're saying the more I live in my core the more it releases the trauma. It changes it, yes. It releases it. It softens it. Because it's see. and you embrace your story. When I get I'll get patients that come in and will do their assessment and they'll say, I've already talked about that. I don't want to talk about that. You'll know because it becomes part of your story. Mm-hmm. You don't necessarily want to shut it down or avoid it. Yeah, I've noticed that with the death of my brother. Like initially it was really hard for me to talk about mm-hmm. it. Um, but as time goes on, it becomes easier and easier. It doesn't, it doesn't give the same weight and emotion as when I originally talked about it. Um, exactly. You're already experiencing that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I really resonate with what you're talking about and it's helpful for these other things that I think that I've kept buried um, for so long and not wanted to talk about like a lot of the sexual stuff, you know, um, even from being a young kid, um, and experiencing like that sexual trauma, I've never really talked a lot about it. And it's crazy because doing this podcast has been therapeutic for me. I bet. Big time. Um, but, and working with you and just, I, I don't know, I guess it's, you know, we talked about it earlier. It's just like, how much, how much therapy am I going to have to do? But, um, <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's quality over quantity. And, and also, I, you know, I want people to hear that I think therapy should be just like having a personal trainer or having a nutritionist like or, um, just it's healthy to do. And I think I'll do, right. I know I'll do it for the rest of my life. Uh, cause life happens. Right. Um, and it's always going to come up, you know, and again, we were talking earlier about, you know, with the traumatic stuff comes up, uh, I think, and I say this a lot, problems don't go away. I believe you get better at dealing with the problems. Uh, that's a great way to put it. Yes. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. you're starting to deal with them from a core space. Yeah. 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 And it's helpful. I feel um, I'm kind of hard headed. So um, and stubborn. Yeah. Um, but I feel this time feels different, um, you know, and I can see now um even with the death of my brother, that all this stuff has come almost full circle where it's pushed me into a space that I've always wanted to be in, Mm -hmm. which is helping people. Uh, And I want to be able to have a quality coaching program. And that's why I'm so adamant about, and I've always been adamant with my coaching clients, you got to be working with a clinical person, you know, right. it doesn't, well, there's a lot of people that don't use the clinical piece. And I've always since day one been a big proponent of having the clinical piece. So it's been really cool. Uh, and I guess what I'm trying to say is that had not, all this tragedy not happened in my life, I might not be sitting here doing what I'm doing, which right. at the end of the day is to help more people right. get healthy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I've noticed that about you. You've um, changed the narrative, especially with your brother. It's so easy to shut it down and avoid it. I see a lot of parents that lose children and they won't identify that child when they ask, are asked how many kids they have. Yeah. And um, that's one way to cope. Mm-hmm. And it becomes such an anchor. You 
have changed the narrative. You've honored your brother yeah. in so many ways this last year. Yeah, it's been good. It's healing. Yeah, it's been super healing. Like, and uh, yeah, it's it's been super healing. Yeah, I can tell. And even like what you're talking about with your trauma, it sucks that we've all been through something and our patients will too. Mm-hmm. Now, what are we going to do with it? Right. You know, and I, I think for what I do, it's so common for people, you know, because I mainly work with addiction and mental health. And, you know, people ask me, am I in recovery? And my answer is always, yes, I'm in recovery for life. I'm not addicted to drugs or alcohol. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do have some mental health stuff. It runs in my family. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I've, for whatever reason, I've done a good job at kind of managing it up until this point. Uh, And uh, it's just been something that I work at constantly. Um, So um, I don't know exactly where I was going with that, and but why, what a wonderful thing. Why wouldn't we, right? We are our best mm-hmm. investment. Why wouldn't we put into ourselves what we do for our jobs or yeah. anything else that we do in life? Yeah. I think it's a wonderful thing. And so many people identify it as a weakness. To me, that's just one of those negative, um, self-talk phrases that was taught. Yeah. That's a good and point. And I see, I see you're, you're actually investing in yourself. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm a big, obviously, uh, proponent of investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's probably one of the biggest things when I sit down with somebody, it's like, Hey, you've been investing in yourself and for destruction. Now it's time (laughs) to flip the script and, uh, invest in yourself on a healthy, to get healthy. Um, I love that. That's so true. Put yeah. as much energy into the positive for yourself that you did for the negative. Right. Even yeah. if you only put a fraction of it. I used to say that all the time when I uh, would mm-hmm. meet with people uh, when I worked at inpatient. I was like, listen, uh, let's put 10% of what you've been putting into your addiction into your recovery and see how much the needle moves. So, um, well, uh I think we've covered a lot and I definitely, uh, I hope this isn't, I know this isn't going to be the last time you're on the podcast. I want to keep having you back. Um, and people, for people listening, uh, Dr. Anderson and I are in the works of collaborating and, uh, putting something together, uh, to where this can reach more people. Mm. I'm a believer I know she's, I mean, you've been doing this for how long now? Almost 30 years. Almost 30 years, guys. And she's really good at it. I tell people all the time you, that uh, you're the best. Thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, if anybody's listening, uh, you can reach me at The In Vivo Project on social media uh, or also uh, theinvivoproject.com for the website. Uh, if you want to get a hold of Dr. Anderson, you can reach out to me and I'll make sure that uh, you get in touch with her. Because do you have, are you, I mean, I know you're on social media, but I was thinking, do you have a business page that you want to tell people about or you want them to just get a hold of me? And then I, I get can, a hold of you. I'm working yeah. on that. I'm in yeah. the process actually this week. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for, for being here. And like I said, I look forward to having you on again and continuing this process. Me too. That'll be great. All right. Yeah. Thank you.